every so often a book character comes along that captures the imagination of children everywhere. And some of the most delightful of all were found tucked in the pages of Beatrix Potter's books. Characters like Jemima Puddleduck, Mrs. Tiggywinkle, Squirrel Nutkin, and of course, Peter Rabbit. Beatrix Potter was born in 1866 and educated at home by a succession of governesses. The parents were overprotective, rarely allowing her to mix with children other than her younger brother, Bertram. She was born into a classic well-to-do Victorian family. And as the daughter of the house, effectively, she was brought up, I suppose, to look after her mother, really. It was thought to be her role in life, or to marry. She only had those two options. But she was already, by about the age of 10, she was already a really quite skilled naturalist. She was a natural drawer. She, she drew everything she saw. And she was particularly interested in, in fungi and in animals. She always loved animals and she always loved children. And she, she wrote to the children of friends or nieces, nephews. And that's how the little book started, because she wrote little illustrated letters. In 1893, Potter wrote to Noel Moore, the five-year-old son of an ex-governess. The letter included the introduction, I shall tell you a story about four little rabbits. In 1902, at the age of 36, after being rejected by a number of publishers, she decided to print that story, the tale of Peter Rabbit herself. After she had done so, a small publishing house called Frederick Warren and Co. agreed to publish it. The book was a smash hit, and before long, Potter was earning enough money to gain her independence from her family. A series of successful little books followed, all carefully sized so the children would find them easy to pick up and read. Titles such as The Tailor of Gloucester, and The Tales of Samuel Whiskers, Pigling Bland, and Tom Kitten appeared between 1902 and 1930, all illustrated with Potter's inimitable drawings. And despite opposition from parents who couldn't countenance Beatrix being involved with someone in trade, she became engaged to her publisher, Norman Warne, only to be heartbroken when he died of pernicious anemia before the wedding could take place. To help her recover from the shock of Warne's death, Potter retreated to her beloved Lake District, where she bought Hilltop Farm in the village of Sorry in Cumbria. Potter had been visiting this most picturesque part of northern England since her childhood and had been taught about its significance and the importance of conserving its outstanding natural beauty by a local vicar called Hardwick Rawnsley. As the years went by and the royalties from her books continued to pour in, Potter proceeded to buy up further areas around Hilltop and eventually, at the age of 47, she married the solicitor who'd been helping her, William Helis, and moved into Hilltop Farm permanently. Once she was married, she began to focus less on her writing and more on practical things like farming and looking after her surroundings. She became an expert sheep breeder, specializing in Herdwicks. She used her inheritance on the deaths of her parents to buy more farms and tracts of lands in the Sori area. And then when she herself died in 1943, she left almost all of her estate to the National Trust, which her old friend Rawnsley had helped to create. Today, her legacy is stronger than ever. Over a hundred years after Peter Rabbit first entered the public's consciousness, the magic of Beatrix Potter's creations continues to enthrall children. I like him because he, um, he's very sweet. It's just so magical. Um, you can have all the new sort of trendy things that children like, but in the end, it is so very much based on a childhood, uh, sort of rural childhood, that children just love it. It's very magical.